Hello, everyone. Good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for joining us. We'll be uh, waiting for some other attendees to join in just one minute. So let's start this live session with the basics. What is Customily? Most of you installed the app quite recently and are either getting started with your store from scratch or beginning the process of selling personalizable products on an existing store. For both cases, we have the perfect tools to get started. So Customily is an app that provides your store with live previews of products, along with options that your customers can interact with, changing those live previews with every interaction. So if I start typing, for example, a letter on this, on this field, this text field, I will get them to change the preview. For example, like this. You can type text, you can select from a clipboard selection or upload your own image. You can have many tools to customize your product. Your preview will change live and give you a realistic example of how your customization will look on the product. Another example that I have here to show you is like this. You can see that. So now this preview is done by loading a template on the page as well as the options. These two elements are created in Customly. If you follow the steps of creating a template from scratch, you'll be able to create the options automatically and connect them to any of your existing products. As simple as that. So in my examples, I may create products using print-on-demand services, or I have my existing products, and I will be able to use Customity to perform these live customizations. This is our latest update for Shopify stores, which allows you to create and publish personalized products easier, faster, and better than before. Those starting your stores from scratch will have more interest in this section because now you can choose a product directly from a print-on-demand supplier, add a design to it, and get it published in your Shopify store, all from the Customity app. Also, with the print-on-demand services that have an API connection, all the fulfillment processes will be automated. This means that once you receive a purchase, all the order details and the ready-to-print file will be sent to the corresponding POD provider automatically for fulfillment and shipping. Another interesting thing about Customity 2.0 for Shopify users is the free access to Customity's design libraries. This means you can find designs ready to use and sell, or you can use this exclusive clipper collection to create your own art. So, we can say there are four different paths you can explore with Customity 2.0. You can work for a print-on-demand provider who has its own product catalog and add a design from Customity's library to it. This is the fastest path, the one that allows you to have published products ready to sell in minutes. You can work with the print-on-demand provider, but choose to add your own designs to their products. In this case, you will have to populate your design library before being able to publish products in your store. On the other hand, if you have your own products and are not interested in working with a print-on-demand provider, the way to go is to start by populating your product-based library first. After you have your own product mockups, you can choose to add a design from Customity's library to them and create and publish products faster. Or you can, of course, add your own designs to your own products. This is the path that involves more time. But once you have all your product mockups and all your design setups, it's just a mix and match game, and you'll be able to create and launch new products in seconds. So for the uh, first, second, and third path, you have seen and you will see 
that we have covered most of the examples with previous live sessions. And I wanted to focus today on the last path, creating our own mockups, our own product bases, and also creating our own art, combining them to create brand new products. Okay, so now that you have all these alternatives clear and you can check back on other live sessions to see all the possible combinations, we have covered them all so far, Let's create some products together using our product bases and our design. Let's start from the beginning. Imagine I am a Shopify store owner. I want to start selling personalized products and I just installed Customily to try it out. Here we are in the main menu of Customily. You can see at the left bar that we have six sections. The first three sections are shortcuts to the 2.0 tools. The other three sections are the main core of custom. You can explore, manage, and create your templates, upload and organize your assets in libraries, color, fonts, vectors, and images. And you can see all your, custom, your connected products in the store section, as well as change many settings that will help you customize the front end experience of your customers. Today, we are going to create the products I showed you at the beginning. We are going to create this cutting board using um, a product base that we are going to build ourselves. We are looking forward to sell this product. We don't have that listed on our store right now, and we want to create this product, but we are certain we're going to be adding more than just one design. So we want to have the product base and be able to put other designs later in new, in brand new products. Also, we're going to be creating this whiskey decanter exactly with the same process. This is also going to be a brand new product with a specific um, product base. And you see, we have, and I can preview this here, we have the same design for both products. So. Yes, we are going to create our own design with the big initial letter and the name in the middle. And we're going to do the mix and match combination of having two product bases with the same design. And so creating from scratch two brand new products published on our store. OK, let's start off in the start section. From here, in the start, you will have access to print on demand providers, design libraries, and product mockups. As you know from previous live sessions that you can check if you have not been joining us uh, before, there are plenty of examples of how to work with these print on demand providers. I just want to clarify that all of them have this sign that indicates that they have automatic fulfillment, meaning that if you have account with them and you have your own API connection with them, what you can do is integrate that and enable that integration in Customity by putting the, the API key. That way, Customity and the POD will be connected and whatever product you create using their catalog from here, like this, will create a brand new product connected to the POD and any will be automatically sent for fulfillment. Now, we have covered this before. There's a lot of designs available. But what happens when we actually see this cute t-shirt here? This means that we can actually access our own product bases. Our product bases can be anything we are looking forward to sell or are already selling. I recommend using this process for brand new products. So let's start off with the cutting board. I'm going to click on create new product base. And you will see a familiar interface because we are, uh, <clears throat> we are working on our own Customities Design Studio. First of all, let's name this um, like this is the live session cutting board. OK, now very important. What we're going to set up here as a dimension is actually the print area that's going to be printed. Even if the board is bigger, you know, for example, that your, your area for designs will be, for example, 200 by 200 millimeters, okay? 
we're going to create this. Meaning that whatever it is inside this is going to be printed later or, or laser engraved or cut out in CNC, depending exactly what's going to be the fulfillment of this product, you know it's going to be working within this area. So whatever design we're going to be creating later will be positioned inside this boundary, this maximum print area. So we're not defining any design here. We're just setting up the size of what, what has to be respected when it comes to this particular product. Um, our particular machine works with PDF in RGB. So that's pretty much what we can do here in the first step when we set up the print area. One thing we can do if we know or we have sort of a mock-up of what we're going to be creating as a design. Um, for example, it can be just a, pic a picture or any sort of um, any sort of, uh, of mock-up or, or previous example that will give us an idea of how the um, how the final design will look. Something like that. I can actually upload this just to preview how it's going to look any design on these particular proportions, for example. So when I click on the print area and I select, you see the print area is meant like this because it's just a boundary that we need to, that will be respected by Customity. We're going to click on upload image. This is all for referencing. So you see, I have this first mockup that I created. Maybe our designers put this together in, in Photoshop and they showcase this to us. Oh, this is amazing. I want this, but I want this in Customity. So, uh, this mockup has the same proportion, so I can I just upload it inside the print area for previewing how it's going to look. Yeah, so it looks looking pretty nice. But this is just a testing out where we are doing of the proportions. Imagine we are working with a, a portrait uh, a print area and we have a, a landscape design. So, okay, so that's not going to look going to have a lot of a, a white space around or, or, or empty space. And we need to double check that. So it's a good opportunity to have this handy tool. Now, nothing of this will be printed automatically. So once we set up the dimensions of the print area, we're going to click Next. And we're going to put together the mockup of the product. If you recall, the mockup is nothing but actually this. is the photo of the product without any customization. and we set up where do we want the customization uh, showcasing on the product. So we come back here and we only have the print area. We need to add, and we have really handy uh, tools here to guide us. We have the add product images tool. I'm going to click here and navigate through this to our, well, mockup is this, this is for the listing and this is the blank one we're going to use. Well, you can see that, of course, because it's behind the print area. But the print area is something we can rearrange. Because remember, right now, we are setting up the second part of our product base, which is the preview. We have the first step, which is the print. And what we're going to do next is showcase the print somewhere else, like this. Remember, this is just a blank area. This white uh, square with the design is only as a reference. OK, you see, it's important to understand that the machine will learn this. This, is, um, this has a specific size, this cutting board. And this particular area is 20, 200 by 200 uh, millimeters, as we set up in the print. And we know the machine is going to print this right in the middle, OK? If we happen to have some sort of uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of um, perspective on the image and we want to kind of uh, skew the print area for viewing purposes, we can actually click on Transform and adjust this, I don't know, something like this. We are very subtle to kind of go with the, uh, with the angle of the, of the photo. Remember, this is how we're going to present the product. This is our print area in 200 by 200, but positioned on top of the product. The white image is just a reference to see how the final engraving will look on the whole product. And there are other tools we can add. Masks, for example, are 
uh, PNG uh, files that you can upload to go over this. Um, very useful when you're dealing with uh, T-shirts or blankets or um, or pillows, something that has a particular shape that has wrinkles and stuff. So if you create a PNG file that has certain transparencies for the design, but also has a uh, 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 opaque areas of the um, of, of the design that will hide everything. That way, the preview will look really amazing. I recommend going to our YouTube channel and check out one uh, the webinar we did on February, in which we created a pillow and we we showed what a mask is all about. But there are other examples, and we have tutorials on our help center with articles and step by steps on how you can create that on Photoshop without knowing anything about Photoshop. So, um, because honestly, when I started this, I didn't know anything, and it really is really helpful. But creating masks is quite easy, um, always working with your existing product, so there's no problem there. We use this a lot with uh, with Canvas as well, and um, other products that will have certain effects that look nicer when you put them on top of a particular design because it will give you texture, it will give you um, like a glass uh, uh, feeling. It's really interesting. Extra items that may be added to the product later may be added as dynamic images. So that's why we have this extra tool here. But we're going to cover this in future live sessions as well. Right now, we want to go to the final step in which we are going to revision our, um, our product base. This is the print area. Remember, the print area uh, indicates this just as a, uh, um, a space where the design will be placed later and the product image for the mockup. This is what you get, you get printed. This is what you see on the front end except for the white part. Okay, great, and let's save it. Now, very important, before you save a product base, you get to prompt it about the variants. And this is where you can actually add more variants, set up the values, right? For example, if I were to have more than one uh, wooden type, if you, uh, if you upload in your product images, you upload like, four different images of different wood, uh, um, different types of wood, because somebody will understand that in the product images, you have at least four, you have four variants for the material or the color, you can rename this. The same goes with the size. If you have another variant, they want to type this size, okay, and start adding one value, then you can add and add another size. This means that you will create another uh, product base with another size in the print area, but the preview will be the same, and so on and so on. This is very handy when you're uh, working with the same ratio, but just changing the size of things. Um, and eventually, all this will be put together into one unique production file, sorry, one unique uh, product base. And when you put a design and, and customity creates everything, it will create a unique template for each size variant. Now, for the image-related image, uh, image -related variants, it will create a swatch. So you're able to see the product, to see the variants, and to have customity change everything all together. We're probably going to create specific products and live sessions to test this out on the field. But just be certain that there's an instance in which you can have a product base with many variants. and the Shopify product will be created with those variants, which is very important because it saves you a lot of time. If I don't have any variants, I just delete everything and click Save. And done. So now you see I'm here. I'm in my product basis collection. I have, uh, I have a pillow, I have a canvas, I have a cutting board that I started off for the first, and then I have the live session. A quick view that I want to take advantage of this prism is to check out the pillow, since I mentioned this before. And you will see that our print area is at this size, 66 by 66 millimeters, so, sorry, centimeters. But then 
when it comes to the preview, we have this. This is, looks really amazing. But how did we create this? Now, the print area is within this. So there's a margin here of fabric that will not be printed. And the design will be inscribing here. Then we have a product image. And you check the product actually has many colors. Three, actually, <laughs> colors. OK. And how? How is it looking like this? It's because it has a mask. If I were to, to uh, hide the mask, this is the photo of the product. It's blank like this, changing, of course, the fabric color, but just like that. And if I were to hide the product image and unhide the mask, you will see that the mask is actually in the background with transparency. Now, this is very hard to see until you move it without moving the print area. And then you understand what is transparent and what is not transparent. The wrinkles uh, have transparency. The context is opaque. This is a mask, basically. It's a PNG with transparency of the shape of the product, some transparency effects on the shadow. And pretty much, that's what we do. I wanted to show you that. So you see that to create an amazing preview, you need a couple of graphics, but nothing more than that. So back to square one, we need a design for our live session cutting board. Am I going to create my designs? Can be here, can be sent over my designs in here. Let's create one. This is going to be the live session split initial plus name. So I have a lot of different names. Let's create a design. So designs have a one by one meter standard square size. It's enough for you to create something big, something that will adapt to anything. But in any case, you want to create any other uh, proportions and stuff, just click resize and change the canvas size. Whatever is go you're going to create here will be dumped into any print area. So I recommend being careful when it comes to putting a landscape design and then trying to fit that into a portrait product base. Yeah, things are going to be really shrunk into the, the print area. So it's always nice to either work with uh, square print areas or keep in mind the, the end product you're going to be using, or at least the family of products and the, the usual proportions of their dimension. Sometimes it's easier to create two designs, one for verticals and one for horizontals, just so you don't have to uh, manually correct some things later. Because, well, different proportions of designs will not will fit and shrink up to uh, be able to get inside any other proportion print area. Customity will not uh, uh, stretch or shrink or um, deform any sign or try to fill a print area in the risk of missing some design information. So that's very important that you understand that. So you know that we will not try to cover as much print area as possible, uh, but actually save the whole design when creating new templates. So let's create this, um, this design we mentioned. You see, this, is, this has a beautiful initial with a split in the middle and another text that will cover the name. For this, let's create a text box. Now, the cool thing about this is that the initial with the, with the, with the split effect is actually a font. And we would, I recommend trying to do that, getting the fonts. I know some of you may have seen this as images, and that's OK. But the cool thing about the fonts is they are really quick to load. They allow for colors. They allow for textures. And uh, you can just type something, and it will show up right away. It's really handy. So for this text in particular, let me uh, make sure this box is as, as big as the print area, as the whole design. It's pretty big. Now, I did some checking before this, and I liked this font in particular. OK, but it's pretty small. Yeah, really small, actually. So let me do some big 
sizing like yeah like this okay perfect so that's looking better and but we don't want this to be this small so let's do keep it under a minimum size of 1000 just in case but this one is going to be really well 1800 now this is not very center but depending on each font that you ever uh, work with you may have to do some adjustments so this is the bottom the center and the top now tops looks very centered and i'm going to keep that let me check what else are we going to be changing about this uh, since we're going to be engraving on wood it's important that our design is black 100 percent black that's how it's going to print and then we can check this yeah you can always preview any letter and see how they look on the font as we always do, I recommend changing these layers to the label that is going to be showing later, which is, if I am not mistaken here, type your initial. So I'm just going to double click this and type your initial. Wait, this saves you time when you're create, building up the options. So now we have the first one and then we need to create the second text box, which is going to be here. Now we want this to have the size. Let me check another, uh, for example, the A. Yeah, just in case we're a bit smaller, like that. And shrink this and this. So we are in there. Perfect. Um, for this text, I look for another font and I found the, uh, yeah. Perfect. It's really small. Again, um, check something like this big but this one's too small so just yeah i think it's going to be very well let's try something else let's test this we're going to put this all caps so we make sure that no matter what happens with the printing uh, or the typing of the customers it's not going to affect the content like that yeah, and again, we are going to check this is black. Yeah, it is black. Perfect. So let's check some dimensioning. Yeah, let's put this up to be really tight, like floating dimensions, and center this so everything looks beautiful like that. Off we go. So this one, this is enough for our design at this point. We want to change this label to type your name. And this is all we need from our design. Remember, this is going to be black because it's going to be positioned on a wooden product that will be wood engraved. And if you recall later, we're going to try the same with a glass engraving. So let's save this design. There you go. And one thing that I always recommend is give it a, a, a couple of seconds before, because each time you create a design, the options for that design will be created and you can play with them and adjust them before a product is created. That will save you time because that way you don't have to change the options of the product. It will be all inside here. So I'm going to edit the options and check out what do I have. I have type your initial, perfect, and type your name, perfect. But I'm going to add some extra. I'm going to open this and let's type a placeholder, a suggestion. Let's just say K as in Kevin or E, we call as our friend Eduardo that recommended these products because he likes, uh, <clears throat> well, uh, uh, barbecues and whiskey. So. It's important that we have one as the character so we don't type extra on the um, on the initials. And of course, we don't want to type numbers. We're just going to type letters with no space. Great. Now for the type and name of name, type your name. We're going to do the suggestion. And limit this to 12. Just in case we uh, we don't want to go into too small on the box 
because it's going to 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 be very far from the edges of the of the split uh, space and make sure this is letters with spaces so nobody types numbers and stuff and save it so now we know we have our particular set of options for that particular design and we are ready to go into the start menu and create the product why because while we can combine this product base and this design into one unique product for that, we're going to create a new product. Click on My Product Bases, and here you get your collection. You can access your collection here as well. We're going to pick the live session cutting board. There's no variants because we never created variants. We can create a type of wood. We can create sizes. Anything is possible with the with the production for the product base. Click Next. And we're going to put a custom design. Now, kidding, but I wanted to show you, especially for the new ones, that there's a lot of things you can explore inside the custom collections. There's uh, categories depending on seasons, depending on chapters, uh, mothers, fathers, and pets, um, events, particular products, particular uh, 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 events like Valentine's, uh, or Halloween, there's a lot of things we can explore here and put on our products, any product. Particularly, we are working with products that will be engraved, so these designs can be out the printed. We have actually made cutting boards with maps, so it's everything is possible. Just today, we're going to focus on that other outcome. But trust me when I tell you that Everything is amazingly possible, especially cutting boards with maps <laughs> on them. So we're going to click on our design and find our designs in the next page here. This is the one we created last. So now we click this. And as many of you have seen before, this is the process in which Customity starts working for you. It's going to create a brand new product on your store. Is going to uh, create as many variants as you selected. It's going to put a, um, a standard uh, listing photo and will put together the template and the options. Remember, the core elements of Customity was the template to load the live preview and the options so your customers can actually interact. And this is all done by Customity. So now you have a template and you have all the options. You have the options the way you set them up with a placeholder with suggestions and the limitations of, um, of characters. So if I type a number here, I actually can't get anything. But if I type something, like this, I can actually type anything. So this is a brand new product we're going to set it up in fact i can save this to be my product image by clicking here other things you can do on this final revision is edit the product details to change the name uh, change the price or edit the options if you wish to change the order or, or anything about this particular setting i'm going to go to edit product uh, I can actually change this, but I want to put a price on this that I'm going to be putting on Shopify later. But in any case, I want to change the name. Here's the place. After we are satisfied with the final revision, I'm going to publish this. Once I publish, it goes straight to my store. Template is loaded, options are loaded, and I can type anything. And get the preview. Now, this will be the end of this, but I'm pretty sure some, some quick witness uh, with the eyes, they say, OK, but this is not exactly what I saw on the example. And that's correct. There's something with the example that is not on my live session product. 
is the texture, right? This definitely has a wooden color and a wooden texture, but this doesn't. And this is a thing we can actually have as a plus in Customity. That's the beauty of what Customity can do for you. Of course, this is a black and white design because it's important for us that it's printed in black and white because the machine needs that. But you can always go to the final template created and do an extra addition to add that realistic effect. Let me show you how. On the back end of Customity, you can check that you have your products. Always you can go to store and see your products. Go for cutting board and find the product cutting board. This is, this is a brand new product created in your store that shows you which template is linked, show you what options are linked, and you're able to do anything, do any changes you want with this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remember that 62F is the one that I'm looking for. I'm going to open this, the list of templates, come here and find that 62F. There you go. This is the template that was created specially for that product. I'm going to edit this, and I will see that the print area and the print part of, of the template is all working perfectly, just like, like our design. On the next step, the preview, I get to use some extra tools. If I click on the initial, I get to open the color here and be able to not only change the color to uh, let me uh, remember if I there was a code that I checked out that was really looking nice. It was the mm -hmm, I can remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like NC three D. Yeah, most sometime. Yeah, there you go. And that looks amazing, right? Save it. But still we're missing the texture. And here in texture, we can actually br browse around our options for metal, embroiderings, uh, leather, glitter, metals, and wool. And that looks more of what we are looking to achieve. Same goes with here. Uh, I'm going to repeat that. The same color and put the same texture and find the right right effect. This is all we need to change from our template. And if I click next to, to go and save it, I will see that the print is still black and the preview will have the wooden texture. And I can check this and see that everything is still working and showing different, creating more realism. After you save. You don't need to connect anything. You need to create anything. All you need to do, because you're still working with the exclusive template, is come here to the product, refresh, and see it for yourself. Now with the texture. And what about the decanter? Right, so now we're back to the beginning. We have our product. We have our design, but we are going to add a new product and want to use this design. So all we need to do is keep this one here and go straight to create a new product base. For this one, we're going to change. It's going to be the live session. Enter. It's going to be 100 by 100 in our print. So it's not going to be 200. Like the cutting board is going to be a smaller print area, but still it's going to be square, it's going to be easy to present, and the maximum print area will be exactly as we have it for this particular size. We can even preview the same, uh, the same uh, concept, see how it fits in the 100 by 100 print area, change this to PDF, and click Next. It's the same. You see, we can change the print area without any problem because the logic stays. And 
when we go to add product images, we're going to add our decanter. Again, we are going to make this look or not. Yeah, printer, yeah, there you go. I'm going to change this and drag this so it fits where it's going to be on the final product. Remember the white square is not, uh, is not how what's going to look. And you saw that when we presented this. It's just a reference for you to see the size of the final design. So now that we're satisfied with this new product that has the same uh, design, but we'll have the same design, we just have the different print area and different mockup. We are ready to save this and do the same mix and match game that we did before. No variants in this case. And this is our product based collection. We have that. We're going to start. We create a new product, product bases, find the live session with Kitty Counter. Again, we can always go to Customity or to pick our own and go exactly to the same one because this is a main design that will repeat on many products as well as other designs will repeat on the, on the cutting board and the decanters. The process is the same. New product is being created, a new listing photo, a new template, a new option set, and everything all together by customers. As you can see, I, uh, in, I guess in one hour to say the most, you can have two new products ready to sell, for example. Having things uh, clear before and, and previewed and, and having the right mockups and everything will save you a lot of time. Now we're going to test this out like that. We can preview this, yeah, and save this to be the the new listing photo, change the name, change the options, anything is here possible, and then we just publish. Now we have this mockup and we have this one to be like this. But again, this is not how it's going to look, right? It's, how, it's going to be a bit of gray with certain transparency. So we can do exactly the same with the uh, as we did with the uh, with the cutting board, go to the templates or find it on the store list. Go to the last modified, find this one, which is the last one. Edit. We don't have to do anything to the print file. That's all working perfect. But here we can play around with the effects we want to create on the front end. We can select one of the texts, type your initial, check out the color, and find a gray one that will be, yeah, sort of like that. Also, it is possible to change the alpha of the color. So if we do something like this, actually goes a bit transparent. Like this, you see there are there's a list. Uh, now you can see the difference. I oh, didn't say, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. There's a chance to change that and get it to work perfectly. Maybe you can zoom out to see if it looks nice. It's going to be like this, for example, and do the same for the other text. A color in a 0.5 alpha and now you have that with that effect you can create more realism check make sure this looks nicer still print in black as the machine needs that and save it this is a second step um this is like an like an extra step to creating more realism it looks amazing it's not something, of course, automated. We don't know how that design will 
be showcased on the front end in order to prevent and to and to load certain colors but knowing that you can always go to the template and do any other changes to the preview adding more you can add more glasses if you want uh, as an example that's all possible so once here just refresh and preview now with another color effect this is all for today i really hope you are now a bit more clear on when to use product bases how to use them how to, to make the most of them you can see that having two product bases in one design will give you that scope of two new products that are working on your store and ready to go and that design will keep on going to other products that you wish to publish of course those two products were created from scratch so this way of working this path of your own mockups and your artwork will populate your store uh, unlike other examples we have seen where the product was already there but at the end, the back end is always the same. You can always check your products. Or you can always check your templates and your options. And you can always do any change that you feel will make the product look better or perform better on the front end. So just wanted to remember that you have a dedicated, excellent support team available in Customity. You can always write them to support askcustomity.com activate the live chat on the app on office hours, and also join our communities. Okay, well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. Uh, the video will be uploaded later today. And Morena has all your information and any other question that might have not been answered. We're going to be replying to all of you. And I will see you on Thursday for our next live session. Have a great day. Bye-bye.